Good afternoon, Indy Congress. Andrew Benioff here. Sorry for the delay, a little bit of technical difficulty, uh, but happy to say that I am here with David Waxman of Top Tipper. Uh, David, welcome. Thanks for joining us Thank today. You. Thank you for having me. Pleasure to be here. Awesome. Um, and uh, so everybody is joining. Hopefully you're able to join smoothly uh, and get on. I'll just start by saying this works pretty similar to um, Instagram Live, which we've used in the past for the most part. This is only our second LinkedIn Live, um, but uh, the system works really well. If you have questions or comments for David, topics you want us to bring up, please put them in the uh, messages area and uh, I'll do my best to address all of them before we go. I usually get to most of them. So looking forward to it. And um, all right, let's get started. So uh, David, thanks for joining. I know you are not, for, you know, this audience is mostly in hospitality and travel, uh, hotels, restaurants, uh, wellness, fashion, art, design, sort of the space. And this is actually not your space. Um, you're, you're mostly focused on commercial real estate. Um, talk a little bit about just briefly your background and also how you, you know, why you thought of this idea for Top Tipper. Yeah, absolutely. And again, thank you for, uh, for having me on here. I appreciate it and appreciate everyone showing up today to listen. So yeah, I'm a Philadelphian born and raised here and came back after going to college and living in some other cities. And as, as you said, my, my primary business is real estate development with a focus on historic adaptive reuse. So taking old dilapidated buildings that, you know, uh, no longer have a use and refurbishing them typically as multifamily with ground floor commercial. Interestingly enough, as you talk about hospitality, we are sort of seeing a morphing now of multifamily with hospitality. And like for a lot of our new buildings, we're going to our designers and saying, Hey, go to that hotel and sort of like riff on what they're doing in that lobby, because we think that that's what our tenants want in the last few buildings we've done have been sort of hotel like lobbies. Um, but obviously I'm not here today to talk about my real estate business. I'm here to talk about top tipper, which is a, uh, a tipping platform that, that myself and my future brother-in-law, uh, Dimitri Purvin, uh, came up with a little over a year ago. It was during COVID. Um, you know, I saw that our trash man, our Amazon guy would come multiple times a day, UPS, USPS, and all these guys are coming to, to our house multiple times a day while everyone was at home. And I felt like that we needed to take extra care of these people because their workload increased exponentially. They're taking more risk. And so I left them each a note and said, hey, I'd love to send you a tip. Give me your Venmo or PayPal or, or um, Zelle. And they all did it. And Dima and I just started riffing on the idea and felt like we could create an app to sort of bridge the gap because obviously you can't sit there and stalk out when these people are going to come. We put it together. Dean was a tech guy, build it and introduce it to the wild, tested, iterated. And a little while later was traveling with my family in Miami. We were at a hotel. I think we were at the Grand Beach in Surfside and wanted to tip the housekeeper, understanding that they had been out of work a while. And I travel with little kids and we trash the room, not on purpose. And Okay, I've had David freeze a little bit. His video froze, unfortunately. I apologize, folks. Hopefully, he's going to be back in a moment. Uh, we just lost David, I think. Oh, there he is. He's back. Hi. So you were saying you were saying that you were you were at the hotel in Miami and you you left the room pretty messy and you wanted to give a gratuity. Yeah, didn't have cash because most people don't carry cash and felt guilty. And like, you know, you walk by them, like while they're like, you come back from the pool or the beach and they're there cleaning your room and you feel horrible because you know, you, you, you trashed it. And so, um, you know, it was like this moment where we're like, well, wow, this really needs to be something that's in all hotel rooms, because obviously I'm not the only person that doesn't carry cash. And I think the last study that we saw was like 67 or 70% of Americans don't carry cash or infrequently carry cash. So it's, it's, a, it's a problem that needs to be solved. Yeah, I think it's it's interesting, especially am amongst um, people who consider themselves hoteliers, whether they're investor developers of hotels or they are um, folks who work in operations at hotels. I think it's a really interesting thing. I think that a lot of guests don't, first of all, they don't carry cash, but they also don't know if they should tip or how much they should tip different hotel people. And I think a lot of... Um, a lot of guests leave hotels without 
tipping either appropriately or at all, uh, which is really too bad. And I've had people ask me because they know I'm in the end of, should I tip the housekeeper? Or should I, you know, they know to tip a bellman, they know to tip a waiter or waitress, but they don't know if they should tip a housekeeper. They don't know if they should tip a concierge or front desk agent for helping them with something or any other person. And I always say, absolutely. My father always used to say to me, you know, have you ever met a wealthy waiter or waitress? I said, no. He said, good. Well, leave them whatever you think you should leave them, leave them two or three more dollars because it very, it affects you very little, but affects them, their life a lot more. So to the extent you can, and everybody's in a different place in life and I get that and that's cool, but to the extent you can, you should be, you should leave more than you think and you should leave it to more people than you think. So I think this is a really good way of doing that because a lot of people don't have, you know, I'll, I'll leave five bucks to the housekeeper for every day that I'm there. So if I'm there four or five days, I'm leaving 25, 30 bucks. And if I don't have exactly 25 or 30, I'll try to leave more, but yep. leave less, you know? But this is a great, this is an elegant way of being able to, to do, do people ask you about, you know, now that you're, you're running this platform, like how much should I tip? Uh, are, are people unsure about it, do you find? Absolutely. Like if you, you Google it and like the suggestion is five to $10 a day and obviously more if you like are, are traveling with little kids and they just absolutely obliterate the room, you know, and you know, they're going to take longer to do a turn or each day if they're coming to your room, they're doing more work. Um, we also have suggested tip amounts uh, on the app so that, you know, sort of guides you to what you should do. But like, think about when you go to the coffee shop, like all the new point of sale terminals all have tipping built into the user experience. And I'm not gonna say it shames you into tipping because you should do it. But like it says like, hey, 10, 15, 20, 30% or whatever it is, even now, like on, you know, restaurant tabs at the bottom of your thing, it'll, it'll do the math for you and say like, here's 15, here's 20, here's 25, here's 30%. So I think people are, are more are more apt to tip because they, it's it's now more of a part of transactions in general. But for whatever reason, you know, at the hospitality level, it's, it's, it's almost been slow to adopt, which is interesting because it's such a tip driven culture. Yeah. And a lot of people, um, David froze up again, hopefully he'll be back in a moment, but a lot of people are, um, they, yeah, it, it is a tip driven culture. Uh, am I coming back on here? Hopefully we're having a lot of technical issues today for some reason. There we are. We're back again. Um, sorry about that folks. I'm not sure if it's, uh, our, our tech platform or just the Wi-Fi, but we're being a little wonky today, but, um, a, a lot of people don't know what to tip and, and, uh, often I, th I find that they, Sometimes they use that because they don't know as an excuse not to tip, which is really too bad because a lot of these people work very hard for not a huge amount of money and, and tips are a big part of their, uh, their livelihood. So to the extent you can, we're here talking about it, you should. Please put um, either stories, comments, or questions for David about tipping or about his platform into the, onto the message area. We'd love to take some of those. Um, the, the, one of the things that, uh, I wanted to ask about those. You mentioned an app. And I feel like today, I got to be honest with you that a lot of people don't. I mean, I personally just do not want another damn app. I just feel like ugh, I got to yep. download an app. I got to register on it and get it. And it's for a good cause. So, I'll, you know, I would download yours for sure. But, you know, do you find people have an aversion to doing that? Is there an easier way, do you think? Yeah, some of our early discussions with 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 uh, hospitality groups touched on that exact issue, and you know, I, I know it as well. Like you now go to restaurants and you scan the QR code for the menu, and instead of getting just the menu, they want you to download the app. So, you know, we have two options: you can download the app, or you can literally just do a guest tipping on the mobile web, and you don't have to download the app, or you can download it later. Um, there's a lot of features in the app that, if you're going to be a frequent tipper, you're going to want to take advantage and have a, a you know see all the tips you've made in the past. There's also a leaderboard. So like think of Peloton in terms of like, you're the leader in a ride or whatever, you know, who's the best tipper in the area. And some people might want that and they won't want to share it with their friends on social, but by all means, if someone doesn't want to download the app, they literally could just click on a link and do a guest tip. And it's, it's as simple as doing a checkout um, on an online store. Uh, so I, I and tend is to it through a QR you. code. Is that through a, like you could scan the QR code or what? You could scan the QR code or it could be a, a link. Uh, so the hotel can hyper. so yep. the, okay so the hotel can like uh, use it the way they want to use it. I would feel I feel like QR codes. Exactly. I mean, they're having their day now, and I used to be <laughs> I used to sort of avoid them, and yep. I was like oh, that's stupid. But now I realize how how uh, easy it is to use a QR code. It links you right to the website. You're right on there. 
whether you're tipping or looking at a menu, it's just easy and you don't have to like type in any, you don't have to type in a web address or anything like that. It just does it for you, which is fantastic. Yeah, QR, certainly COVID, there's a lot of things COVID has accelerated adoption of and QR codes is certainly one of them because they're a perfect tool to bridge the physical and the online world uh, in a really simple fashion without having to type in a long, you know, string of uh, web address. Yeah, no, that's really cool. That's really cool. Um, so obviously ILC is focused on hotels and travel and hospitality. What What other areas though is top tipper sort of looking at to extend this sort of gratuity platform? Yeah, anywhere people are tipping is, is a logical is a logical place to to start. So, you know, there's there's spas, there's hair salons, there's anything related to delivery, certainly not food because, you know, there's a built in tip piece in Uber Eats or, or DoorDash or what have you. Um, obviously, around the holidays, people are tipping their trash man, their mailman, et cetera. We actually think people should be tipping them more than once a year, but that's that's mm -hmm. another that's another topic and the sort of changing social, social mores. But, you know, certainly around the holidays, people are tipping their trash people, they're recycling people. And, you know, we think all of these places are very logical um, ways to do it without like being like, Hey, let me see your Venmo. Cause the one piece of the Venmo is, is a social thing. And, and if someone doesn't turn it off, I can see everything that you're spending money on. And like, I don't know, I don't think my trash man necessarily wants me to see what he's spending money on just as much as I don't need him to see what I'm spending money on. So, to have a, a dedicated safe space where tipping can occur and there's record keeping and all the things that you need, we, we think makes a lot of sense. How, how does this, when you're talking to different hotels about this, um, do they, you know, I, I know there are a lot of technology platforms that hotels are considering today. A lot of new ones are coming up all the time. Some are super helpful, some are not as helpful, but they're, they want to try it out, see what it's like. What are some of the, what are some of the ways that this, I mean, Obviously, this, I guess, would help employees at the hotel because it's easier for them to receive gratuities. Are there other hurdles that the hotel has to go through or do you make it really easy or how do you implement it, I guess? Is Absolutely. I mean, we understand that the, the, that the hotels are suffering from a, from a shortage of workers right now and that if you're you know, a, a manager or assistant manager or some kind of you know, higher level job at a hotel, you're running around. 24 seven putting out fires and you know to, to thought of adding to your workload may be daunting so we've really designed this system so that the onboarding is simple so that we can get them using it we provide all the collateral for them and we want to make it as seamless as possible you know you do want to have a champion um at the hotel that sees the benefit of this because to your point it's really great for employee morale i mean if someone's recognized and, and that recognition you know Tipping is obviously a great form of recognition. They're going to work harder and that's going to translate to the guest experience. And obviously that's the most important thing um, at a, a, a hospitality property. You want the people to be happy because they're going to come back and they're going to tell their friends about it, which is the best marketing. So, you know, we have different methods in which they can roll it out. They can do a pooled house where the, all the tips go to one account and then it gets doled out to the employees. You can pick and choose which departments. It could just be housekeeping. It could be valet. It could be pool. It could be bellhop or it could be to the individual employees. Um, and so, you know, we're able to sort of work with them and we have different pieces of collateral that they can use that they have the ability to customize with their look and feel. Uh, and we provide all of that at our cost uh, to them and we don't charge an onboarding fee or a subscription fee. Wow. So it really sounds like it's um, you guys are setting it up. There's no cost to the hotel and it no. helps with I mean, it sounds like you're actually paying me to um, to uh, uh, promote this. Which you're not, which you're not, just so we're no, clear. No. Um, but, uh, but I mean, it sounds like it's actually sort of, a, in some ways, almost a no-brainer because it sounds like you're taking, you're, you're setting the whole thing up for them. They can create a yep. tipping pool and everybody can track it. That's yep. good for re employee retention, I would think. And, and the other piece is, you know, we under with inflation the way it is and hiring is the way it is. If you can, you know, say, hey, we've been using this system for 90 days or 120 days, and here's the historic amount of tips we've been able to pay out per employee average. So if we're paying you 18 an hour, I'm just making up that rate base, and here's the tipping we've seen that adds another whatever per hour, this is what your hour really looks like. It's going to help you not only recruit, but more importantly, retain, because McDonald's is paying $22 an hour, or, you know, it's just, it's crazy out there what companies are paying uh, to, to attract new employees. And so, there's only so much the hotel can take the burden on of hourly yeah. rate before it just yeah. doesn't work for their economics. Yeah, really, it's uh, it's it's uh, it's very interesting. 
when when you um and by the way uh throwing it out there for any any and all who are uh listening in today and watching if you have a question or comment for david please throw it on the the chat part I, i'd love to get to it um the the uh, when you're when you're traveling what else do you see david I, as i know you you travel a little bit with family and for other reasons as well what else are you seeing aside from tipping when you're when you're going to hotels and restaurants are there things that you're noticing that you think are, are like uh, gaps in the system, like you noticed with Top Tipper? Um, other things that um, are particularly interesting to you as you're as you're as you're doing travel? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, not necessarily gaps. I mean, one of the things I've been seeing recently that I really like is the is the uh, text messages from the hotels, like with like a dedicated person who's almost like your concierge checking in on you and asking if you need anything. I think that's a really interesting way to do it, and it's not obtrusive. It's not like it's not like someone knocking at your door or what have you. And I think that's a really interesting um, thing that I've seen. Um, I'm trying to think of what other stuff we've seen interesting recently. So you, 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 do you, you don't, um, are you the kind of person when you're traveling and you arrive at a hotel, you want to use an app or use the website or whatever to check in and go directly to your room? Or do you want to interact with the people in the lobby? What's your preference usually? Oh yeah, I'm definitely not trying to interact. So, You're not trying to so if I don't have to deal with people, it's great. So I think okay. it's it's an like I was on a business trip to Huntsville and stayed at one of those a, AC um, the AC Marriott concept and like beforehand like hey if you download our app you can just go right to your room here's your key I was like oh that's amazing so that was probably like last year that I did that and it worked I was like okay this is cool and so you know and then the same thing with obviously checkout's been that way for a while where you can just basically leave and they charge your credit card but I thought the check in was super interesting I don't actually think I interacted with one employee on a two night stay there the whole time. Amazing. So yeah, yeah. I mean, I, there's a, there's a lot of talk in the hotel sector right now about yep. what technology we should use, what technology we shouldn't use. A lot of the technology that's sort of behind the scenes, for example, texting the guest and saying, you know, welcome to the hotel, Mr. Waxman. If you have anything you need, just reply to this text at any time and we're happy to help you. That's sort of behind the scenes. You don't need, and often by the way, I don't know if you know this. That's sort of that's sort of a bot that's doing that. It's it's actually not a person. So Amazing. so um, and then it, if it's more you know if it's um, if you put it you know if it's like oh I'd like to have a uh, uh, I need another set of towels. Well then the bot will connect with housekeeping and just they'll send you the towels. But if you say I'd like to get yesterday's newspaper, well the bot probably can't handle that. So then a then a human then it refers it to a human being and then they have to handle it. It's usually the front desk will deal with that. But those are the kind of things that that are um, super interesting. Some guests do want to talk with agents and some don't. And it sounds like you don't, which I totally get. Um, and sometimes I do. Sometimes I'm okay with talking to people. Sometimes I just don't want to have to deal with anybody. So I guess it sort of depends on who the person is and how they like and to think, travel. And I think the younger crowd, and I can't believe I'm using that term, but I think younger folks definitely want a tech experience. I mean, I was at a hotel in Montreal. I can't remember the name of it. And they had a robot to deliver the newspaper to your room, to deliver food to your room. And it literally went up in the elevator by itself, came to your room. You got like a, uh, the, the doorbell rang. I guess they have some system and there yeah. it was. Oh, you froze again. Shoot. Hold on one second. We're going to have to wait for David to come back. We're having some technical difficulties today. Unfortunately, hopefully he'll be back in a second with me. Hello. Okay, we're back. We're back. We're back. We're back. We're back. I guess it's a Wi-Fi thing, but anyway. Um, so the, and so the robot was. You, you it went was cool. There, the robot was there with your food. Yeah, with your food or your newspaper or whatever you need. It was a really interesting thing. I wish I could remember the name of the hotel, but it was, it was a cool little hotel in, in uh, downtown Montreal. There's a funky hotel. I've never been to it. There's a funky hotel in Tokyo that's close to the Haneda Airport, which is the second airport in Tokyo, the smaller one. Um, that is entirely the, and they're like actual like sort of humanoid, vaguely humanoid robots standing at this counter. They, you have to go up to them and they, and they're very like old school, like, hello, welcome to the hotel. Can I check you in type of a thing? But it's, it's made like, it's sort of that on purpose, I guess. And people say that, you know, I, certain people, I guess, love that. I'm, that's not my thing, but um, I think it's just interesting how uh, uh, different people look at hospitality sort of in different ways. Um, uh, this is very cool. No, I, I love it. I, I think that the idea of what you're doing is really interesting. I, I, I will say 
one of the things that I had mentioned to you before at ILC, we've had one or two other companies that are purporting to do what you're doing attend. I have not had um, extensive conversations with them, to be honest. I don't know where they are in the process. I know there are probably a couple more out there. So they're probably like, you know, I don't know, five or six companies out there that are doing this. How do you feel like you compare to those guys? And have you, you know, I, I'm assuming you've done your homework and sort of looked at what they're doing. Is there any comparison or is it just sort of first to market or how does that work? I think the first thing it's like, you know, your gut reaction is like, oh my God, there's competitors. Uh, you know, what do I do? But that actually means it's a good market and that you're, you know, if you're the only one, that's actually probably not a good thing. Right. So there's some great companies out there that are, that are, that are attacking what is a massive space, right? There's tons of hotels, not just domestically, but internationally. Um, and, and they're taking different approaches. Some are taking a much a larger enterprise approach where they're going after the big dogs and trying to integrate into like, their corporate apps into the system right got it yeah very smart um obviously long sales cycle um very technical etc and then there's other folks you know taking different approaches some charge subscription fees some charge sign up fees um you know but the, generally the premise obviously is the same is like let's let's offer tipping and so it's it's great that it's a conversation like we haven't talked to anyone in hospitality it's like there's no need for this which is great you know right, so right 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 so it's a validation in, 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 in one way that there's, there's folk, other folks doing it. And it's a, it's a huge market, right? There's, there's space for everyone to do well. And so, um, you know, I think it's, it's, it's a good thing. Yeah, no, that's cool. Like, like you said, if you were the only ones there, you're either a blithering genius or you're way off the mark and nobody's interested yep. in it. So exactly. In case, we can, I think we can agree that there is, there is a need for it for sure. Um, I like, I mean, I have to say, I personally like that you do the whole setup. And I also love the QR code thing where I don't have to, I can just, you know, I was at a restaurant just yesterday where they had a different QR code for every table. So you clicked on your QR code. That means table four. The waitress doesn't even come over and talk with you. They were super short staffed. So we put our, 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 um, our order in by clicking on that QR code. And then, you know, five minutes later, we had our drinks. They walked right over to us. They knew which table we were at. Amazing. So you could, I guess, essentially sort of have a QR code for the housekeeper, a QR code for the concierge, and a QR code for the yep. bellman, et cetera, et cetera. So you could just go around and click on whatever one you want and you're ready to go. That's awesome. Exactly. Yeah. Or, or even as, as granular as each employee if they wanted that. But I think, you know, our sense is a pulled house is, is or a pulled per vertical service, you know, worker oh, interesting. type. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. but but we have, we have optionality depending on on you know what the what the hotel wants to do, and um, always looking at you know getting good feedback and figuring out ways to add features that people may want that we didn't think of. No, it's amazing. I, I guess the last thing I would say, since we don't have other questions right now, but um, the last thing I would say is I, I always ask this question as we end up here. You know, we've gone through a, a pretty hard years, and we're slowly coming out of it. I don't think it's like a straight line to come out of what we've gone through, but slowly coming out of it. Uh, you know, you, you can dwell as much as you want on the last couple of years and how difficult everything was and bad things that happened, but I prefer to sort of focus on sort of positive, positive things. So what do you see in your business uh, now um, that, that are sort of rays of sunshine or things that are positive that you're seeing uh, right now and as you're looking forward into the future and, and what you're trying to do? Yeah. I mean, I think, I think technology has become has come front and center in, in sort of everything that you're doing in your life and, 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 and using it in ways that's going to make your life more efficient. So obviously like avoiding having to go to the ATM or even go to the bank, I mean, go to the bank to get cash, who does that? But, you know, I think we're, we're so early, even still with technology, making our lives easier. And I think that's COVID sped it up exponentially. It's sped up, you know, e-commerce adoption obviously has grown exponentially not great for brick and mortar retail, but that, you know, we can have that discussion another time. Um, and so I think that bodes well for, for what we're doing, obviously QR code adoption. Uh, and then obviously just sort of people realizing there's folks that were really hurt by uh, COVID and lost, you know, a year and a half of working when the world really was shut down and tipping to help them get back on their feet is important. Even with the government stimulus that po folks like this might've gotten, um, you know, it's still, it's still been rough. So I think, there's a, there's a lot to be grateful for and thankful for. And, you know, it's not doom and gloom, despite what the news may be showing us. I tend mm -hmm. to be an optimistic person by nature. And, you know, I think there's, there's good stuff coming down the pipe. Yeah, no, that's awesome. That's great. I, I agree. Um, a little extra help for other people who maybe don't do as well as you have in the past is 
always appreciated and is I think uh, to some extent I sort of consider it part of my duty to to do to help everybody else out. So I think that's great. It's a great message. Thank you very much, David. Thanks for joining us. Really Absolutely. appreciate it. Thank and, you. Uh, yeah, look forward to to uh, using using your platform to uh, send out gratuities. So thanks very much, everybody. Thanks for joining us today. Um, as you saw at the beginning, and we will probably have up at the end here, Indie Cultivate coming up June 20th and 21st, celebrating innovation and startups uh, in hospitality, travel, and lifestyle. Going to be at the White Hotel in Brooklyn. Really good. It's going to be a great, uh, great time. So please join us. Uh, David, thanks again. And uh, we'll talk to everybody soon.